to sponsor the Fire Fauci Act, and I'm grateful to my colleagues here for co-sponsoring this bill because the American people deserve answers. The Fire Fauci Act will bring Dr. Fauci's salary down to zero and also will require the Senate to confirm someone to fill his position. You see, Dr. Fauci was not elected by the American people. He was not chosen to guide our economy. He was not chosen to rule over parents and their children's education. But yet, Dr. Fauci very much controlled our lives for the past year. Dr. Fauci, there is a lot of information that needs to come out on him. And as you all have seen with the emails that came out, that he owes the American people a lot of answers, but he also owes the world a lot of answers. These are emails that are very important that you all need to make sure that you're sharing with the public because the public has suffered greatly. Businesses have closed, small businesses have suffered. People have truly been depressed, health consequences. People have died alone in hospitals and nursing homes. Children's education has been delayed by a year. And then we even witness suicide numbers going up, not in just adults, but young people, people in college, children in high school, children in middle school, and even younger. This isn't how our country was set up, and this is not how people should be governed. But yet it's Dr. Fauci, and through his advice that constantly changed, that is how things happened. You see, there's a lot of evidence, and answers need to be found, and answers need to be given, and the American people deserve the answers, and count accountability should be held for Dr. Fauci and all of those involved. And if American tax dollars went to the Wuhan lab and indeed funded this virus, which it's very clearly coming out that this is very much a man-made virus, a man-made virus in a lab that has sickened the world and caused people to die. You see, people are really tired of there never being anyone held accountable, never anyone being fired. And that's why it's time to fire Dr. Anthony Fauci and give answers to the American people who I mind you, this is, got, this is the government that should be serving them, not the other way around. So I would like to go ahead and introduce Mr. Massey from Kentucky. Thank you, Marjorie. <clears throat> I was honored to be Marjorie's first co-sponsor on this bill because I've said for over a year that Dr. Fauci needs fired. I realized this the first time he joined us on a conference call and there were questions he couldn't answer and wasn't even concerned about answering. Like, when would we open the government back up, or the government and all the private businesses? When would we open it back up? What were going to be the, the qualifications for that since he was going around to every state saying shut it all down? The other question he never answered, still hasn't answered, is what are the, the bad health effects from the shutdowns? You need to take a whole of health approach to the response to this virus. And he never did that. He's a political scientist. He is not a scientist. He's a political scientist. He has admitted, and it's hard to believe, but he's admitted that he fudged his own answers about what level would constitute herd immunity. He said, well, I didn't think the public was ready for that number, so I gave him a different number, and now I'm going to give a different number. And never in between there did the science change. So we need to fire Fauci. We need to do the investigation of the National Institute of Allergies and Infectious Diseases. And my hat is off to Ron DeSantis, who saw through this fraud early on. Florida chose freedom over Fauci. Governor DeSantis banned Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks from coming to Florida and speaking to the government employees there and giving the imprimatur of the federal government to force these private businesses and schools to close. So with that, I will turn it over to Mary Miller. Sorry, Mary. Thank you, thank you, Marjorie, for introducing this important piece of legislation. I signed the Fire Fauci Act because it was under his direction and support as an unelected and overpaid government bureaucrat that the shutdowns and masking of our country was ordered. It's cost us, we can't actually estimate the costs. We will see in the future the actual cost financially 
emotionally, relationally, and spiritually that had the cost to our country. From his emails and much more, we can see the extent of these mandates were unnecessary and not in the best interests of the American people. Americans deserve to know and fully understand how COVID came to be and make sure that this never happens again. Children have been out of school for over a year now. They face irreparable damage because these mandates were put in place thanks to Dr. Fauci's recommendations and selfish actions. The release of Dr. Fauci's emails detailing his views and knowledge of the COVID-19 virus makes this call for his removal all the more important. Among other things, Dr. Fauci was informed that the virus could have originated in a lab in Wuhan, China, before he publicly acknowledged that possibility. All the while, he stood by and allowed President Trump to be demonized for even suggesting that it came from China or that it originated in that lab. China gave us the virus and has left us with lasting effects. The only thing worse than an overpaid, unelected bureaucrat is an overpaid, unelected bureaucrat that doesn't tell the truth. Thank you. Thank you for being here today, and I thank Marjorie for being the sponsor of this bill. It's an important bill, and like uh, Representative Massey, I also have been calling for Dr. Fauci's dismissal for over a year. Look, if you want to be trusted, tell the truth. Dr. Fauci misled the American people, and he leveraged his position as a leading figure at the White House to become a celebrity, for Pete's sakes. Recently, a FOIA request revealed the truth about his dishonesty in broad daylight. Although he recommended double masking privately, he admitted that, that masks don't work. Despite denying that taxpayer dollars were being used to fund gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, privately he admitted to it. And while mounting evidence suggests the virus may have leaked from a lab, Peter Daszak, who sent taxpayer dollars to the Wuhan Institute for coronavirus research, thanked Dr. Fauci directly for dismissing that theory. There's one additional thing that Dr. Fauci should be remembered for. It's that while American small businesses were forced to close, emotional and mental problems developing all over this country, widespread economic malaise and dysfunction and displacement, Dr. Fauci, the highest paid government employee, was out posing for magazine covers and not tending to the matters at hand. And maybe, ultimately, since he wasn't doing a good job at understanding and dealing with the scientific implications and the societal implications, maybe it was better that he was out taking pictures instead of dealing with the problem. The American people, though, were abiding by stringent guidelines, weathering draconian lockdowns, and lost their livelihoods only to be deceived by this unelected bureaucrat who is narcissistic in nature. Thanks to President Trump and Operation Warp Speed gave the American people the most effective remedy to thwart the virus and in record time. President Trump's plan was targeted, aggressive, and completely transparent. Dr. Fauci could have joined the cause and helped usher our nation out of the crisis we faced, but he chose the path of hypocrisy and deceit. Who will ever forget him wearing a face mask while throwing out the first pitch when nobody was near him. And yet, while people were sitting next to him on either side, the face mask was down. At the same time, he was demanding that every American wear a face mask at all times. Dr. Fauci never missed a paycheck during the pandemic. But others did. I have friends and constituents who lost their jobs and lost their businesses. I think it's long past due that we relieve him of his duties. I thank again Marjorie and all my co fellow, fellow co-sponsors of this bill. He deserves to be stripped of the taxpayer-funded salary that he so richly does not deserve. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Congressman Paul Gosar from the great state of Arizona. And I'm very proud to be a co-sponsor of the Fire Fauci Act with 
Marjorie Taylor Greene and my colleagues. Dr. Fauci has been lying for months about the origin, or, origins of the Wuhan virus and has seriously mishandled the nation's COVID-19 response. Dr. Fauci has given contrary advice regarding the source of the virus, the transmission of the virus, the virulence of the virus, the efficacy of masks and vaccines, the efficacy of social distancing, and has demeaned anyone in the public health community that disagrees with him. Americans across the country have lost faith in our public health community because of Dr. Fauci. While telling Americans to trust science, quote, Fauci routinely contradicts the established science. We now know that what I've been saying for over a year, Dr. Fauci has continuously and deliberately misled the public at every turn. For example, Dr. Fauci said that COVID-19 was not transmissible by vapor, only surface contact. Then he said it was both. Today he says it's only transmissible by vapor, not surface contact. Fauci once, once said COVID-19 was not very contagious. Now he said it's super contagious. He said masks don't help, but he then ma mandated masks, urging them to be double when worn. He falsely required all deaths be recorded as COVID-19 deaths for anyone who died if there was any detectable virus, even if the death was an accident or a heart attack. These, these greatly inflated those numbers. Fauci knew that school-aged children were not at risk, though he continued to advocate for school closure. He, was in, he has ignored the best advice from scientists in his very own science realm in favor of fear-mongering and theatrics. Egregiously, Fauci even knew that the virus likely originated from a lab in Wuhan, China. Now there are over 2,000 emails proving that Dr. Fauci's ego got in the way of the facts over and over again. A few weeks ago at a Senate hearing, Fauci testified under oath that no taxpayer funds were used to fund the research in Wuhan. He then recently reversed himself and testified at a House hearing that, in fact, the National Institute of Health had earmarked $600,000 for the Wuhan lab to study the possibility that the bat coronavirus could be transmitted to humans. Can you say perjury? The truth is Dr. Fauci is no scientist. He's an actor and deserves an Academy Award for best dramatic actor in a pandemic. He has completely abandoned science. Every time he makes a demand for more lockdowns and more useless rules, Americans lose freedom. Enough's enough. It's long past time that Mr. Biden fire Fauci and that's why I'm proud to co-sponsor Fire Fauci Act. And I yield back. I thank you. Well, thank you very much. I'm Representative Buddy Carter from Georgia. And I am proud to be a co-sponsor of the Fire Fauci legislation, which is necessary, absolutely necessary. Folks, let's understand. China sent us the virus and took our jobs. And what have we learned about the origin, which is extremely important? Now, I'm a healthcare professional. I understand how important it is to understand and to know where this originated from and how important time is, how important it is to know that information as soon as you can know it. But what happened? Now that we've seen the release of these emails, we know that what has happened is that Fauci was covering up. And who else was complicit in this? The World Health Organization? Yes, they were. And now we find out that even the Democrats are trying to cover this up. Why? That's a good question. Why are they trying to cover it up? And I will submit to you the reason why is because Donald Trump was one of the first to suggest that this came from the Institute of Virology. And they hate Donald Trump. That's why. Who else was complicit? Big tech. Until just recently... They didn't even want anyone to, they wouldn't let anyone post this on the platforms. They were complicit as well. Dr. Fauci has not given us any leadership at all. Folks, we need to understand China is not our competitor. They are our enemy. They sent us the virus and took our jobs. They should be held accountable. We need true leadership. Dr. Fauci is not giving us true leadership. That's why he needs to go. Folks, this is serious stuff. If it weren't for Donald Trump and Operation Warp Speed, we wouldn't be recovering from this vaccine right now, from this virus right now with this vaccine, which I would submit to you that this is one of the greatest miracles, medical miracles of our lifetime, of our generation. 
to get this vaccine that is safe and effective out in this period of time. I can tell you from experience, being a pharmacist, I know how long it usually takes, five to seven years. This is phenomenal that it came in this short a period of time and that it is safe and effective. But, folks, we need to know how to originate it. And Fauci has been covering up on this. The World Health Organization has been complicit in it. Big Tech's been complicit in it. Now the Democrats are in complicit in it. This is something that's got to end. We need to fire Fauci and fire him now. I'm Bob Good from Virginia's 5th District, and it's my privilege to support this bill, the Fire Fauci Act, and I appreciate Marjorie Taylor Greene, my friend from Georgia, for uh, bringing this act forward and for all those who are co-sponsoring it with us. You know, after Dr. Fauci's emails were exposed, he went to speak directly to his supporters at MSNBC to do damage control. He said, a lot of what you're seeing as attacks on me, frankly, are attacks on science, typical for him arrogantly equating his continuously changing and confusing opinions and admonitions with the proven principles of science. However, on February 5th of 2020, Fauci said in an email, the typical mask that you buy in a store, a drug store, is not really effective in keeping out the virus, which is small enough to pass through the material. Then, of course, he reverses course on the decades of research that supported that, and he supports every American wearing a mask, even our children, who are at tremendous, were at, proven to be at tremendously low risk of infection, let alone illness from this virus. In another email on February 23rd of 2020, Fauci said that children have a very low rate of infection, which has been, again, proven to be true by their extremely low rate of infection from it, and more importantly, their illness from this China virus over the past year. Despite this, Fauci has supported the ridiculous policies that lock down our churches and small businesses, many of those businesses which are closed permanently and jobs which are lost forever and people will never recover from that economically, closed our schools, our children. How will they ever recover from a year out of school when there was almost no risk to them to being in school? Needlessly masked our people, pretending, as the senator from Kentucky said, the theater of pretending that wearing a mask made a difference in the transmission of the virus when all the data and the research from decades showed that was not true. To this day, he even supports our children wearing masks going into the school year in September. That is child abuse. The consequences of what's happened over the past year under Dr. Fauci are egregious and catastrophic. A CDC study found that the percentage of emergency room visits have increased tremendously and young people are increasingly suffering from mental health issues. A survey of 11,000 students ages 13 and up showed that after the school closures began, 38% felt more concerned about their mental health. 51% reported being more stressed. 39% felt lonelier as a result of these policies. In spite of Dr. Dr. Fauci, though, and because of the work of President Trump with, do with doing what no one said could be done and getting this, this vaccine at warp speed, America has finally safely reopened, again, in spite of Dr. Fauci. Yet there are still states, including my home state of Virginia, that will inexclusably, inexcusably not fully reopen our schools and continue to mandate that our children wear masks. But does Dr. Fauci seem to care? He does not. He doesn't contend these continued unscientific measures, and he seems primarily concerned with his own legacy, his book deals, uh, his appearances on MSNBC and other pundits from the liberal left of, of, the, of the media. I could further mention his complicit support, as, as others have said, about the now, uh, the now proven erroneous effort to dismiss the possibility that the China virus originated in the Wuhan lab and much more. So let's give Fauci all the time that he needs to get his story straight on NBC, MSNBC and other outlets. It's time to fire Dr. Fauci and stop using taxpayer dollars to pay for this nonsense. The fake news media can have him full time as their opinion funded. Thank you. And I welcome Congressman Mo Brooks. Well, I too am a proud co-sponsor of the Fire Fauci Act. The reasons that have been given have been excellent. Let me add a little bit of my own. Dr. Fauci is consistent in just one thing, and that is inconsistency. Why should anyone believe anything Dr. Fauci says when he so quickly takes the opposite positions only a short time later. 
Dr. Fauci's emails prove that since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, his private communications were often very different from what he said publicly. En masse, in February of 2020, Fauci declared there was little effectiveness to wearing masks. Yet, in January of 2021, Fauci declared that double masking was, quote, common sense, end quote, and, quote, likely more effective, end quote. Yet the science is that some masks, like N95s and N100s, work very well, while some masks actually make the spread of COVID-19 worse. On the one hand, with respect to the economy, Fauci stated he cannot, quote, imagine shutting down New York or Los Angeles, end quote. Yet, shortly thereafter, in March of 2020, Fauci recommended a 14-day quarantine, then turn that into a month-long quarantine, then turn that into a two-month-long quarantine, followed by an endless stream of attacks on states that, quote, open too early, end quote, and praising cities and states like New York that stayed closed. Never mind that liberty-based states like Florida and Texas had a far superior COVID-19 death rate compared to shutdown states like New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts. In 2020, Dr. Fauci, without adequate scientific data, speculated and repeatedly protected China and dismissed the communist Chinese leak theory. Yet today, the scientific evidence is overwhelming that COVID-19 is a man-made virus and that the virus was man-made in the Communist Chinese Party's Wuhan Bioweapons Lab. The question is not COVID-19's origination point. The question is whether its dispersal was accidental due to negligence or recklessness or intentional, a question only the untrustworthy Communist Chinese Party leadership can answer. And in that vein, let me emphasize the kind of damage that has been done here in the United States of America by COVID-19 and around the globe. The Communist Chinese Party is financially responsible for these liabilities. You've got trillions of dollars that have been spent by the United States government that otherwise would not have been spent. You've got trillions of dollars in damage to the American economy that otherwise would not have been damaged. And you have unlimited amount of personal injury from deaths and injuries suffered because of COVID-19 and the Communist Chinese Party's intentional, accidental, or reckless malfeasance at the Wuhan Bioweapons Lab. In sum, America needs a COVID-19 expert we can trust. Trust in Dr. Fauci has been shattered. Hence, Dr. Fauci must go. Thank you. You've heard all of the concern and the outrage from my colleagues and, and co-sponsors for the Fire Fauci Act. They are expressing the concerns of the American people. These are concerns that span across politics. This isn't a Republican issue. This is not a Democrat issue. This is, a, this is about people. Now, the question is, and I ask all of you, how do you feel about being part of a human experiment with COVID-19, as that is what we have been over this past year? And the reason why we deserve answers is because Dr. Fauci's emails, with him himself stating that he funded to the Wuhan lab this gain-of-function research. And here's the question that needs to be asked, why? Would, would there ever be viruses created, taken out of nature, that can be shared and passed among bats or other creatures, and then harnessed and changed into some sort of virus that can be spread among people? There's a word for that. It's called bioweapon. And were we all victims of a bioweapon? We demand answers. And Dr. Fauci should give them, and everyone involved needs to be held accountable for that. China also needs to be held accountable. They lied, and as we know, many people have died.
some of the very first people to get the virus were Wuhan lab workers. And yet here we had Dr. Fauci playing cover for all of this. He told, he told President Trump millions are going to die. He was saying that on CNN in March, but yet in his email, he stated the spread rate and the death rate was going to be several hundred thousand. Imagine that, advising the president one way, but yet in his own personal emails, admitting the truth. Dr. Fauci must be fired. People that are not elected by the American people should never be governing our country, should never be controlling our lives. We've got to hold him accountable. We have to hold China accountable, and they need to pay reparations. This is something that we're demanding. Thank you very much. Please cover his emails. Get the truth out. Let's not divide people with politics over a virus that has killed people. Let's bring America together in healing this nation by finally holding someone accountable and helping people. Thank you very much. Um, Alex Nazarian from Yahoo News. Um, you know, you call it the China virus. You suggest that it's a bioweapon. There's no evidence of any of that. And we're also in the middle of a spate of attacks against Asian Americans. Aren't you just feeding that uh, pretty no, irresponsibly? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And you're not going to turn this into something else. This is a virus that killed all kinds of people. It had nothing. It has nothing to do with anyone's race or ethnicity. It has nothing to do with any of that. So, no, not at all. Yes. Let me, let me follow up on oh, this. Sure. Much. Let's be real clear about something. I'm very disturbed that you would even ask that kind of question. Chinese Americans are not necessarily members of the Chinese Communist Party. Understand that the Communist Chinese Party rejects virtually every provision in what is known as our Bill of Rights. Recognize that the Chinese Communist Party does not believe in the kind of republic that we believe in. And for you to associate the Communist Chinese Party with Chinese Americans, as you have done, I would submit is egregious and wrong. But with respect to bioweapons, Marjorie Taylor Greene asked a really good question. Now, I serve on the House Armed Services Committee and on the Science, Space, and Technology Committee. Ask yourself, America, this question. When we talk about gain of function, let's be a little bit more specific about what we're talking about here. We're talking about a dangerous virus being changed so that it is much more communicable, meaning people are much more likely to get it, and or it becomes much more deadly. Now, why would any country, why would any country do that with a virus to make it more contagious and make it more deadly, if not for militarization purposes? And if you look at the Communist Chinese Party's background and its relationship with the military, it leads you but to one logical conclusion. Thank you. Representative Carter, during his comments, well, well no, it's, You've made the comment that vaccines are safe and effective. Yes. Um, the other folks standing up here, have you been vaccinated? And what is your message to your constituents about the need to be vaccinated so that we can move beyond this pandemic? I would like all three of you others to respond. Can I respond first? I just want to make sure everyone understands, as a member of Congress, as a member of the Doctors Caucus, as a healthcare professional, I thought it was important for me to set a good example. I went through the clinical trials. I actually went through the Pfizer clinical trials so that I could set a good example. And I was fortunate enough, uh, it's a double blind study, as you know, you don't know whether you're getting the placebo or the actual vaccine. I did, in fact, get the vaccine. It was safe, it was effective, and I encourage people to use it and to take it. One of the biggest scandals during this whole pandemic is the cover up that's been committed by Fauci and the CDC, especially the CDC, about the effectiveness of immunity that's conferred after a natural infection, after you recover from that. They've completely ignored that. They want everybody to get vaccinated, even those who don't need vaccinated. And the science, if you follow the science on this, the Moderna trial showed there was no benefit of the vaccine to those who recovered from infection. The Pfizer trial showed there was no benefit to those who had recovered from infection from the vaccine. A recent study with 52,000 people at the Cleveland Clinic, 13 
hundred plus of whom did not receive the vaccine but had prior infection showed that none of them got reinfected symptomatically. And then if you want to compare the efficacy of immunity from recovering from COVID to that of the vaccine, the biggest study out there is the whole country of Israel. Tel Aviv University, six million participants in this study, six million data points. And it showed there's virtually no difference. Actually, it showed a little bit, but probably not statistically uh, significant, a little bit better immunity from natural infection. And before you all report this, I'm not saying go out and get the, the virus instead of getting the vaccine. The vaccine can save lives, it's certain. But there's no need, the science shows this, there's no need to get the vaccine if you've already recovered from COVID. And, and there's no need to expose yourself to that danger. The CDC knows this. They admitted to me on a recorded phone call that I'll be glad to give you that they knew they were misreporting the results of the Pfizer data. So you're saying, I just want to, number one, you didn't answer whether or not you've been vaccinated. Well, first of all, it's none of your business, but I'm going to tell you, I'm not vaccinated. And until there's some science, by the way, I have a master's of science degree from MIT. I'm not a virologist, but I can read data. Everybody just needs to read and don't put your head in the sand. Look at the data. I'm not going to get the vaccine until there's data that shows that it will improve upon the immunity that's been conferred to me as a result of a natural infection that I had. You know, the fact is that the American people were duped in the past year and a half. And while this has obviously been a very serious virus, we all know folks who've been affected by it, sadly, uh, ultimately infected by or affected by it and, and lost their lives. However, from the very beginning, it was known that this virus put at risk those who were seniors, those who were obese, and those who had other health factors. And it was almost no serious risk to other folks outside of that. Two tenths of a percent of Americans have succumbed to this nearly, nearly two tenths. Uh, and the vast, vast majority of those either, again, had other health factors that were serious, they were senior citizens, or they were, uh, uh, had obesity issues. And so thankful to the president for the work that he did, the former president, to get this virus available to those most at risk, most in need. But the American people were duped into believing that a mask made a difference when decades, decades of history and study and research show that that wasn't the case. And then as it applies to the vaccine, in the past year and a half, I believe it's been demonstrated that everyone by now has some sense of either natural immunity because they've contracted the virus and they know it, natural immunity because they've contracted the virus and they don't know it, they're not susceptible to it and they didn't contract the virus, or they've gotten the vaccine. But no one should be shamed or forced into uh, receiving the, the vaccination. No one should be shamed or forced into admitting whether or not they've receive the vaccination because it's private health information that no one should be asking. Because if you've been vaccinated, you shouldn't care if someone else has been vaccinated because you've been vaccinated. And no one should be shamed or forced into wearing a mask. Thankfully, that's begun to be lifted here in the House uh, because it didn't make any difference. Thank you. Good answer. I'll follow up with that. And, and here's, here's how I see it. I stand with the Americans that want their privacy. And HIPAA gives us, gives us rights to privacy with our medical information. And so I appreciate you asking, but that is my right to keep my medical information private. And I, I also want to point out something that everyone fails to remember to talk about. The vaccines are not FDA approved. They are experimental. Again, I'll say that. The vaccines are not FDA approved. They are experimental. So while Mr. Carter was brave enough to participate in a study, there's other people that just don't want to be a part of the human experiment for vaccines. And that's okay, because thank God, so many people survived this virus. My husband's 97-year-old grandmother survived the virus. Thank God. Now, sadly, we've had people succumb to it. But it's people's choice, uh, just as Mr. Good said. And, um, you know, if you get the vaccine, good for you. I support you in the freedom to do that. If you choose not to get the vaccine, that's okay. That is your choice. And that's, that's the wonderful thing about our country, and we need to maintain that. But we also have to fight hard to make sure people are not discriminated against 
because they choose to either get the vaccine or not get the vaccine. They shouldn't be treated any, any differently. And that's not who we are as Americans. We don't want to be doing that. So, yeah, one more, one more question. Yes, sir. So China has a proven track record of deceiving the world, whether it be the cover-up of the Tiananmen uh, June 4th massacre or the various religious persecutions that continue throughout China. Um, what makes you think that they'll cooperate with any legitimate investigation, and how should they be held accountable? Well, that's a great question. Why would they cooperate, right? Because they definitely don't have to. They, they're already doing everything they can to cover up the information about the Wuhan virus. Thankfully, we've had two brave defectors that have come forward and given information about the, the virus, information that they saw in the Wuhan lab, and we're grateful to those people. They're risking their lives to do that. I think what we have to do is we need to investigate this, and that's why the Fire Fauci Act is very important. We want to know what did they know and when did they know it. And then this is something that we need to all come together on. I, I really ask every single member of Congress and Americans all over the country, let's come together on this one. Let's find one that we can come together on because all of us have been affected. Thank you very much for coming today. I'm sorry we've got to finish up. Thank you.